And what I want to look at is specifically the topic of how important it is to lock in your key staff, your key customers and your key suppliers, why that is so important and how that pretty much instantly boosts the value of your business and how you can do it. So like, you know, really, really effectively as well. So what I'm going to do is show you uh, a few working examples. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to run you wise I'm doing now, but I'm going to show you a few of the documents and the resources and the things I did to do that, because this is when I took my business to market, this was pretty much the most common or, or often the first question that I was ever asked when people expressed interest in the business. Well, tell me about your staff. Tell me about your customers. Tell me about your suppliers. What level of certainty have you got around the fact that they're going to be with you for the long, uh, long term and they're going to keep delivering? So I want to talk about that, how to best lock in these staff, customers and suppliers. So the first thing that uh, what I wanted to run through was a really simple sort of highly effective personal development plan is what I call it in my business. Uh, another word for it might be an incentive scheme. So well, I guess before I dive in, what I just want to say is this, that I'm going to show you a lot of stuff. And on some levels, it might be kind of overwhelming. Um, but you can, what I want to say is that you can all do it. It is absolutely possible. Now, when <laughs> I want to show you something, if you can see this, here is a big fat A4 diary. Okay. That one says uh, 2006, 2007. I've got a second one here, 2007, 2008. Now in this diary was effectively my business. For four years, I ran a business out of an A4 diary. This was my reservation system, my operation system. Everything that happened in my business was handwritten into an A4 diary. How embarrassing is that? I used to literally, at a time when I was starting my business, I was, I was running all the tours. I was doing reservations, inquiries. I was taking calls on the side of the road. I was you know, managing staff, I was trying to develop new products, everything. It was a complete, it was chaos. It was, frankly, it was horrible. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it was unsustainable. And there were so many times I just wanted to throw, throw the towel in and go and do something else because uh, I, 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 I was overwhelmed, I was, I, I was lost and I just wanted to, to, to put that white flag up. But the time came, there was a few pennies dropped with me. One actually was a really great book I read by a guy called Michael E. Gerber, Al Gerber, called The E-Myth, all about systematization, so system I, um, systematizing, uh, implementing processes, all these kind of things. And it changed my life. And when the penny dropped, I started to figure it out myself. And I, I created, and I was not an, a techie guy or an ops guy, admin guy, I had all lot, really limited skill sets when it came to all this kind of stuff. But I was able to scale my business up when the penny dropped and I started building out all these systems and processes, scale it up fairly quickly to a business that was doing, um, you know, well over a million bucks in revenue and then quickly scaled it from a million to two million in just a couple of years based on the systems and, and the processes that I was able to build out. So that was, that was how it started. And when I, I my friends used to think I was, I used to get so much crap from my friends. I thought I was the biggest loser. Everywhere I went, I had a, an A4 diary tucked under my arm. I went to the pub or if I went to you know, any, any limited time I had up in that, in, in that period, I always had this diary with me. So um, if I can do it, you can do it. It is absolutely possible to achieve anything you want in, in, in your business. And of all the conversations that I have in my, uh, you know, we took with, with, with uh, micro business owners, both in my chosen field, tours and activities or any other niche in any other industry, the same problems exist they have you know it's always it always comes back to the same kind of struggles and challenges no structure inefficiencies loss of information when people walk out the door overwhelm lonely it's thankless doing everything things are taking too long uh, not having any fun anymore and so much of that comes back to the processes and the systems and uh, and getting things streamlined so without further ado uh, what I want to show you, first of all, is a way to keep your key staff tied into your business. So I just want to jump in and grab this document here. All right. So here, this is what I, I, I created. And it was really, really effective. And I did this for my, uh, as I started to grow, it started with my office assistant. 
Then it started with my um, business development manager, my the admin assistant, my general manager. As, as I grew, everyone had this personal development plan. So this is an example of one that I created for my operations manager. And I would encourage you to do the same. I'm gonna show you documents that I use and, and, and they might be a little bit overwhelming and a little bit detailed, but I'll just focus on the core elements and how you can implement them. So here's the really important thing. If you're gonna create something for your, um, for, your, uh, for your team, so what you want at a minimum is create something that has both company-wide objectives over here and something that has role specific objectives so uh, and you want to let's start with you know three four maybe five company-wide objectives so the first one would be an obvious one developing your vision mission your core values your brand promises and making sure that they are living and breathing them and adhering to them and be able to demonstrate how they're doing that second is communication um, now these ones are right across the business how your team members communicate with the other people in, uh, in, in the office, things like uh, workloads, individual tasks, um, and you might get specific, but anyway, and you may not choose communication. It's an example of one that I use, completion of tasks. Are they actually getting their job done? Are they actually showing up when they're supposed to show up? Um, all those things, continual improvement. Uh, they have a responsibility to identify in, uh, efficiencies and improvements right across the business and make recommendations or actually go ahead and make those improvements and also financial targets. So there was a couple that I used uh, in my business. So had a minimum target, a stretch target, and sorry, a, a target, a stretch target, and then a minimum acceptable target. And so, so basically, and then what role specific would be related exactly like specifically to the role of that person. Okay. So I'm not going to go deep into those, but what exactly does that person have to do? And um, you're gonna get a copy of this in the members area, by the way. So uh, the other ones might be uh, communication, accurate and timely communication within their specific to their role. An operations manager would need to be familiar with the, the products that they're um, piecing together and they should be successfully delivering their service. And that is things like guide training, um, you know, briefing, educating their guides, you know, getting feedback, all those kind of things. Um, of vehicles. So whatever, but at minimum, those two sections. Now, the way that it would work would be this. Um, when, when we review and when we meet, uh, which I'll show you how we do that in a second, you would have a, an employee that first of all, has an opportunity to rate themselves. So they give them a score, themselves a score out of 10. Okay, so when you come to meet them, they've got their, their column filled out. You've got yours filled out as well, but you're not showing them that first of all. So they're, you're asking them to tell you what score they gave themselves and explain why, justify why they gave themselves that score out of 10, okay? And the reason we do that first is because it empowers people, it gives them buy-in, you know, buy uh, they feel like they're part, they're, they're listened to, they're valued. And let's say they've given themselves an eight, you've given them a six. Well, they get a chance to actually explain and rationalize their score. And that may change your, yours because you don't know everything that's going on in their lives, okay? Uh, so I've just seen something pop up in the chat and I'm, oh, that's good. So I can see the chat from here. Why wouldn't they give themselves all of a 10? Uh, I'll show you that in a second, good question. All right, so, um, oh, that's great. So the chat pops up, awesome. This is, this is all happening, it's all flying along beautifully. So, uh, because they've got to justify it. I'm going to show you how we scored in a second. Then that might maybe change the way you actually score them. All right. So uh, it might, you may think, oh, yeah, I didn't consider that. Okay. That's a really good point. I'm going to change my score from a six to a seven. So anyway, we go through that. They uh, score themselves. You score them. And then, but remember, you, the, your score is the final one. Their score is, 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 is really, really helpful because it, it allows them to justify to you, but your score, the management score is final. So you, you base your score off your own personal opinion, plus the reasoning or the case that they, um, they have to justify their scores. Okay, so that's how we do that. And there's a, a mid-year review, end of year review. If you don't have to do it in such detail. Uh, you might do one review a year, it's totally up to you. You can use this in any way that you like. Um, and then uh, down here, there's actually a third section, which you may or may not want to use. That's personal development objectives. So we wanted every person in our business to be 
taking steps to improve the way they did things. And it was the onus was on them, whether it was a book that they wanted to read, whether it was a short course, whether it was a membership, whatever they uh, identified, you had to approve, you had a set budget for it, but they were taking some active steps to better themselves, okay? So they were trying to uh, show you what they were doing to do that. And you were doing the same thing. You, that may be too advanced for you, that's fine. But anyway, that, that, was, that was valuable to us because we wanted people to be improving all the time. So here's the review schedule. Just so they know, there's no question marks about it. Quarter one was a progress meeting. You know, just how you're going, just to check in. Quarter two was the mid-year review. Quarter three was another progress meeting. And then quarter four was the final end of year review, okay? So we asked them to, to prepare a week beforehand, which was clear. And this is how we scored it. Whoops. So we scored it like this. Um, uh, so one to two was poor. So Basically, the scoring was very, very hard. So let's say a, a five or a six overall performance consistently meets and may occasionally exceed expectations, okay? So that's hard um, to do. So, you know, you find people getting a lot of fives or sixes. Strong, a seven or an eight exceeds expectations, okay? So, you know, it's people, if they're giving themselves a 10, that's hard to really justify. So if they think they're exceeding uh, expectations, then they're in seven to eight ca category. And then lastly, they need to know this. This is why they're doing it, um, reward and recognition. So at the end of that uh, review, you could either choose to pay part bonus mid-year, part end of year. They get a chance to make 10% of their salary. So you calculate up all their scores, and you, you crunch out a number, if their average score is a 5.5 over all categories, then they have a potential to make 5.5% of their um, salary in, in, in bonus. So that's why they do it. And that was really, really effective. So uh, hold any questions till the end. So that, that, that was a way. And the great thing about this is you're wondering why we do it. First of all, it keeps people... Uh, they, they feel like they're part of something that you believe in and they're valued, they're motivated, they're incentivized, but also you structure these reviews uh, to review the, the period that has, has already gone by previously. So therefore, they're already into the next period of review by the time you do the review and then the bonus is calculated and then the bonus might be paid a couple of weeks later. So all of a sudden, they're, they're a month or two months into the next period of review before they get their bonus. If they leave, then they they relinquish all rights to their bonus, which means they're kind of tied to you in a way as well. Okay, it's a little bit like a golden handshake. 